Hey there, Commanders. So, I made a couple mistakes on the recent Diamondback Explorer engineering build that I debuted. It was a very dusty old build, and the night that I made that video I was in a bit of a hurry, so I didn't realize that that build was missing those things, if you can believe it. And I've gone ahead and I've unlisted the previous video, and I've decided to break the Diamondback Explorer exploration build thing into two distinct additional videos that I'll release here over the coming days, and this will be the first one. Uh, the Diamondback Explorer that I debuted in that last video was kind of a bastardization of two different concepts. One is a long-range explorer and one is a guardian ruins explorer. This video is going to take that idea and it's going to split them back out into more dedicated concepts. So this Diamondback Explorer features some engineering but is designed for you to be able to go out to the Guardian Ruins and to some other sites close to the bubble specifically to collect materials like raw surface mats and, and Guardian salvage. Uh, to that purpose, I have made a couple of changes compared to the last video. And I'll, I'll, I guess for the sake of consistency and record keeping, I'll include a link to the previous video so that you can see some of these differences if you want. But this is going to be uh, assuming that you have only minimal engineering available and that you want to go out and get some hot ticket items like the Guardian FSD booster, Guardian reactor, and potentially some of the Guardian weapons. Uh, those are for Thargoid hunting. This build is similar to the basic exploration build I debuted about a week ago, except that it makes a couple of specific changes. The first is it goes in and it boosts the frame shift drive. There's a few ways you can go about doing this. Felicity Farseer is the easiest. I recommend taking that basic exploration ship from my previous video, two videos back. Uh, take it, fly it any direction 300 light years out, or maybe bum a lift on a fleet carrier to get the mission unlocked for Felicity Farseer. That's a quick way. Um, that gets you FSD uh, frameshift drive engineering. The other thing that you can do is you can try to go for the Tech Broker Engineered Frameshift Drive, because the Diamondback actually does take it, which is really cool. I think it's the smallest ship that can accept that Frameshift Drive. I would say that it lets you skip Felicity Farseer altogether, except that you need her to unlock other engineers. So you're one way or another, if you want to get all the engineers going, you still have to, I'm, I'm pretty sure you still have to, to go and at least uh, get her up to grade 3. But those two ways get you a frameshift drive that will get you north of 60 light years. The Tech Broker FSD is actually better. If you want to take the more patient route, it requires a lot more material grinding. And if you don't have any engineers unlocked, then you have to accept a much lower jump range in the process of going to get that stuff. It might make it take a little while. Whichever path you choose is acceptable. But all this does really, getting your frameshift drive boosted, is it reduces your travel times. Since you are going to be jumping well, a fair distance from the bubble, a really good engineering ship can make the trip in about 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, the highest level engineering ships like the Anaconda can do it in 15, maybe a little less. But this is the major upgrade that you have to be concerned with. Everything else is up to you, but in your optionals, there are a couple of switches that I recommend that you make. Um, if you've got a 4A fuel scoop, that's better. I put a 4B in here because I'm assuming you might still be operating on a budget. And going to a 4A takes you from 10 million to 12 million. Still, you know, it's, it's within power constraints. You don't need to engineer the reactor to be able to stick one on. And then I have a 4G planetary vehicle hanger in here. Now, this is because if you're new to hunting at Guardian sites and you're not sure what you're doing, it's easy to lose SRVs in there. It's not like you're going to get blindsided and blown up in seconds, but it's kind of a slog, and if you're not attentive, the Sentinels can overwhelm you and, and can kill you. So this gives you some redundancy. That way, if your ship, uh, if, your, if your SRV gets blown up, you don't have to go all the way up to the nearest fleet carrier or jump around trying to get SRV restocks. A 3D shield generator unengineered is sufficient. If you have any engineering and you want to go in here and, and boost these up a little, that's your prerogative. Uh, these two cargo racks are here for the purposes of commodities gathering because some of the tech broker blueprints for both Guardian and Human blueprints require you to have some commodities in your cargo hold to be able to unlock them. I'm, I think 12 is sufficient, although I'd have to go in and look at the specific lists. But if you need more commodities, then you can drop the AFM or the Super Cruise Assist and add the extra cargo space that you need. 
The pulse laser is for guardian beacons and potentially for close air support if you happen to be hitting guardian runes with a friend. One of you guys can be flying, although you will suffer some... For whatever reason, FDEV has this wobble mechanic. When you're flying with flight assist on close to the surface of planets, your ship will kind of meander drunkenly. It's similar to the wobble effect that gimbals have, although you don't have to worry about your gimbal wobbling unless you're targeting something. Uh, point defense is for shooting down guardian missiles. The little drones that pop up will fire off these little mortar missile things that will hunt and track. The point defense can see those and shoot them down. This utility should be placed on the front above the cockpit or well, yeah, on the front above the cockpit is the best place to stick it. And make sure when you land that the nose of your ship is pointing into the ruins, uh, generally into the ruins. It doesn't have to be dead on. The point defense has a pretty good field of view, but if you park with your rear to the ruins, then it will never do anything. And with the side on, you might have some blind spots. The uh, point defense can't see, so make sure you park with your nose towards the ruins as close as you can get. And a heat sink, uh, heat sink launcher to deal with overheats. That's power. Actually, let me uh, you've only got uh, available power to run one heat sink launcher at a time, so if you want to throw in extras, it's up to you. Just make sure you turn them off so that your reactor remains power constraints. Since we haven't engineered the power plant yet, you do have to be worried about overheating when fuel scooping. So just pace yourself. might have to park a little farther away and not get optimal scoop rates, which means a two-minute refuel time. The Diamondback Explorer tends to overheat when you're fuel scooping for long periods of time near stars. To avoid this, I recommend taking a little bit of extra time each jump, scooping to a full tank. But if you ever got caught in a bind and needed to, the Diamondback with its stock fuel tank configuration can jump uh, between 7 and 10 times, depending on how hard you're pushing it and the cargo loadout that you're, or the internals that you're running. So just be careful, be patient. This is your first tier explorer. It's going to take a little while to get her all the way up to speed. Um, but the next build that I debut will be the max performance build, assuming that you have everything unlocked, optimized for jump range, optimized for surface exploration. You can fit both of those into the platform. It does cost you just a little bit of jump range, but once you've got all the engineers unlocked and your guardian blueprints that are, are key for exploration available, you can really bring ships like these to life. And a lot of the upgrades you'll be unlocking are relevant to the other bigger ships. Guardian FSD boosters are a huge deal. If you go for anything, um, I recommend going for that one first, and then going for all of the other stuff afterward. Anyway, that's all I got for today, so I will catch you guys later.